So, a um, couple of questions, um, and I guess this is we get this a little bit also about when we're harvesting honey, is it is it stressing the bees out when we're taking the honey out, and is it disturbing them in any way in those flow frames? So we get a lot of questions about that and they're just coming through over the weekend because we've had a viral video with a whole lot of new beekeepers that have never heard about it before. So my father and I put a lot of attention into making sure the bees had the least disturbance possible. And we had to redesign and redesign to do that. So I'll go through some of the design things we took into account. And you can see this is the frame we're harvesting and the bees are just walking as normal on their comb surface while the honey's draining out beneath their feet. Now some of the bees are getting into it, they're starting the process of decapping because they can tell the honey's drained out beneath their feet and they're going to rip that capping off, tidy up the cells, rebuild the parts and the whole process will start again. It's capped yet and there's bees down the cells. Now if we had have made the parts like this so they met each other then what could happen is it goes like that, not a major problem for the bee, but when it comes back, then a wing or a leg could be caught in the parts. So what we did is we put space there like this. And that means the bees have to bridge this V-shaped gap with wax. And we've got a whole patent about it. And uh, that way when it moves, that wax breaks, this wax breaks and it comes back they can't get a leg or a wing caught in there. At worst, they could get it caught in some wax and the other bees will just help them get out. So that was an important part of design in order to make it uh, as gentle as possible for the bees. And I'm really happy to say far less bees are harmed with this method of harvesting than the conventional method that I used to do.